Hey guys, Michael here. So today I'm going to be talking about something a little different than what I normally do. We're going to be delving into the depths. The depths of coding hell. At least for a beginner anyways. If you've been around the block, you've been coding professionally for a few years, these things probably won't relate to you anymore, but if you just started, you're just getting into the nitty gritty like myself, then you may find yourself in these same perils. And I'm gonna tell you how to get out. So I figured a, a video like this would need like one of those cool like, you know, voiceover intros, so I'm gonna do my best here, guys. On my short journey through programming, I have been fortunate enough to survive a treacherous journey through, I think, five separate hells. And now I'm gonna tell you how to get out. <laughs> All right, guys. The first and outermost layer is known as limbo. Here, you're unsure of whether or not you wanna start and you start to toy with the idea of coding and you look into it, but you're terrified. It's just, there's so much going on, you're filled with self-doubt and you're constantly talking yourself out of it. Any excuse is a good enough excuse to not start today. If you're stuck in limbo, just give coding an honest attempt. Set aside a little bit of time every day for like a month where you dedicate yourself to the craft, where you're just gonna be coding. Like whether it be 15 minutes or like five hours, set that time aside just to work on you and developing yourself and learning how to code. Make it focused and cut out your distractions. Make that time matter and you'll find yourself falling out of limbo into layer number two. Things are gonna get a little more hard now. Or level. I think we're gonna go with level from now on. Like layers, levels, layers. Let's go with levels. You'll find yourself falling to level two. Now the second layer is known as the ABC Darien, or noob layer. Did I say that right? ABC Darien, ABC Darien. What's this mean again? A person who is just learning a novice. I'm expanding your vocabularies and your mind with this one, guys. Yes, level two is known as the ABC Darien level, or the noob layer. In this layer, you started. Good job. You started, you got committed, you're going. But now you're drowning in a sea of information. You've done the hello world about 20 different times, 20 different ways, and probably like two different languages. <laughs> and you don't remember any of it. You're overwhelmed by the sheer volume of syntax that each language has, and it seems as if it's gonna be impossible to remember and retain any of it. It's so much. What do you do? This was one of the most grueling times for me personally. Some things just didn't click in that first month for me when I was learning. What's important here is to find a source of information that clicks with you and be kind to yourself. It's easy to start thinking that you're just no good or it's just too hard, but things will start to make sense. And immersion is really important here. Like the time you can't spend at your computer coding, try to read a book, try to watch YouTube videos like the one you're watching now, and do things that will get you thinking about these concepts and hearing them a lot because repetition is really important and seeing a lot of it and being exposed to a lot of it will help it sink in sooner. It doesn't matter the language, it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. Immersion, 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 okay? The more you're exposed to code, the more it will make sense. Also, there is no one size fit all course. Some things won't resonate with you, and you'll just end up wasting your time. If you're slamming your head against the wall, trying to learn a single concept, don't be afraid to just up and walk away and find another source. You can always go back to that source that you were working on and pick up where you left off, but it will save you so much time if you just go to another video or go to another tutorial, uh, class, whatever it is, and see if you can pick up that one specific concept better, you know, whether it be a little more clearly or just something is explained differently where it makes sense. Trust me, it will save you guys so much time. Level three, tutorial hell. By now you found videos or tutorials and things are starting to make sense. You understand that building is an important part of getting better and start looking for walkthroughs to build anything you can think of. You build along with the tutorial and your project turns out great. 
Then you try to take all of that practice, all of that experience that you have, and you try to build something on your own and realize that you don't know how. Nothing stuck. So what do you do? You find another tutorial similar to the idea that you've had, and you build along with it yet again, learning nothing. This is another layer that can cost you a ton of time if you're not careful. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing tutorials. They're a great way to fill knowledge gaps and expose you to concepts that you just don't know about yet. You don't know what you don't know. But nothing's gained from the tutorial unless you're able to replicate it on your own. At least some of it. Some of it has to stick. After following along with the tutorial, you should try to build out a similar project on your own. This is also a great time to start hitting up some source documentation for the concepts that you're uneasy about. This will provide significant insight into the why behind your actions, and that leads to actual retention of the knowledge. Ooh, it's starting to get hot down here, y'all. Layer four, Farago. All right, the fourth level is known as Farago. 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 Farago, AKA a confused mixture. By now, you're coding on your own and you're building projects, but things quickly become confusing. You build one piece at a time without understanding how the project's gonna work as a whole, and then things start to fall apart. You have to come up with terrible, honestly, terrible ways of connecting these two different components that you made because you didn't think about how to incorporate everything to seamlessly together. Now this is obviously a result of poor planning beforehand, or knowledge gaps, or both. But either way, this leads to buggy code that's hard to read and wasted time, and time you don't get back. It's important to slow down here and think about your approach to the project. It does wonders to sketch out how you want the project to look. You can use websites like Figma for that, that's what I use personally, or you can even draw it down on a notepad, it doesn't matter. Once you have the design, you can plan out the proper logic to get everything working well together. The more you plan out here, the more time you save when building the project. Flesh out as much of the details as possible. If you're working with new languages, technologies, libraries, or frameworks, anything that you're unfamiliar with, stop. Stop what you're doing and build a small test project on the side where you focus on one thing at a time. Get that one thing working and then implement the next new feature. Layer five, the fashionista. Chic or so fetch. In the fashionista level or chic or fetch, you're spending hours on cosmetic tweaks. You're refactoring your code and making it perfect. Everything has to look and feel right. The last 10 hours of work have resulted in only a handful of significant changes or improvement. Just a few more pixels to the right. If I could just get this box to pop up like this. Ah, for me, this is CSS on every project. This is also the biggest threat to lost time. At some point, you just have to call it complete accept that there is no such thing as perfection, and set deadlines for yourself. Have the discipline to call it quits on your project deadline, and put the pressure on yourself to get it done in your allotted time. You'll learn more from starting the next project than you will from trying to make sure everything is perfect on this last one, and uh, hint, hint, it never is. The sixth and final level, the aspirant. 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 Here you're building projects on your own all the way through to completion. You're deploying them so people can see them and use them, and now you want to work in the dev field. However, however, you doubt yourself, and you continue to build one more project. Just one more project and I'll be ready to apply. Just one more project and I'll feel confident in myself. And then you somehow finally manage to convince yourself to start building that resume, but have no idea where to start. And then you decide that this one project will look better on your resume, so you decide to go build that instead. And this is the level of hell I call home. I've heard that people can get junior dev jobs just knowing, you know, basic JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, but I feel like I'm personally not ready to take on that role yet. But, but, 
I've made a game plan. I have three projects that I'm going to put into my resume, and I have a plan for its presentation. I've also started reading Cracking the Coding Interview. Yeah. And I'm giving myself time to prepare. Now I need to set a deadline. The only question is, when? I'll be making another video going over my plan for transitioning into a dev role soon. So you guys can stay on the lookout for that. And if you guys have gotten stuck in any particular hells of your own, or any of the ones that I've mentioned above, let me know in the comments below. These are based off my personal experience, but I know I'm not alone in these struggles. And neither are you. So, I'm still climbing out with you guys. Or, climbing in? I think I did this whole thing backwards. We're supposed to be escaping, right? You escape up. You see, this is why you plan beforehand. Well, whatever. That's going to do it for this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later!